Hey guys, Christian Madaf Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 5 from the Jan 2008 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it tells us that on August 31st, 2007, Gift Bag Enterprises prepared the following incorrect trial balance. Okay, so they've given us a trial balance here. Fixed assets in the credit column, no. Overdraft in the debit, what's going on here? Creditors in the credit, right, that's fine. Cash and debtors are assets, they have debit balances. Capital has a debit balance, fine. Drawings is debit, opening stock is debit. Revenues should have a credit balance. Okay, so this trial balance is messed up and it still balances, eh? Now, the first thing we have to do, as it says, is rewrite the trial balance, placing items in their correct positions. And then, following that, we have to open a suspense account and post any difference in the correct column of the trial balance. Okay, so gift bag enterprises, corrected trial balance as at August 31st of 7. So the non-current assets belong in the debit column. As a matter of fact, let's put DR and then CR there, just to emphasize, right? Okay, next. The bank overdraft belongs in the credit column because it's a liability. Credit service is in the correct column as will cash in hand, debtors, capital, drawings, opening stock. Revenues was in the incorrect column and expenses was in the correct column, right? Now, if we add up everything, sorry, well, yeah, that, sorry, I was supposed to add in the suspense account after, which I will do. So to get the suspense account figure, we have to add up everything here, which is 54, four, Add up everything here, which is 94. So we definitely need a suspense account figure. So let's just check it, right? So 54.4 is the total with all the suspense account balance. To find this balance, we have to add up everything here in the debit column, add up the credit, and then subtract. It's like balancing off a T account, right? So that figure, all right, will of course be the suspense account balance, and it will be $36,000. See? So now 94, 94, debit column, credit column. Okay, cool. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so they tell us in part B, on October 31st, 2007, gift bag discovered the following errors. Okay, so they give us four errors, right? And they say, prepare the journal entries to correct the errors. Do not include narratives. I think I did just for the, just for the sake of practice. Um, and that, that kind of covers what we're supposed to do in item two here. Stay the type of error in two, three, and four above, okay? So one at a time now. Now, the funny part about one at a time is that in item one, they had two errors. First thing, it says that fixtures bought for 450 in cash were entered in the purchases account. Now, by the way, if you need to see how to do anything with errors, whether it's correction of basic errors, suspense accounts, that kind of stuff, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to my errors playlist and a, and a link to it in the description below. It's definitely worth your time. I think there are about six or seven videos, but that's only because I don't, I try not to overcrowd any one video with too many different things and I actually give you guys stuff to practice. So if you need help on errors, check out that playlist. I promise you will not regret it, okay? Now, back to the question at hand. So fixtures bought for 450 in cash were entered in the purchases account. Now, the purchases account records purchases of stock, no other asset. So if we put fixtures in the purchases account, it shouldn't be there. We have to take it out. How did we put it? On what side? We could have safely assume the debit side. So we have a debit to in purchases that should not be there. And we have a debit to fixtures that was supposed to be put in fixtures, but wasn't. So how do we fix that? Well, if we were supposed to debit fixtures, but we didn't, then to fix that, we have to debit fixtures. So let's start there. Right now, of course, we use the general journal to correct errors. With the general journal, debit entries come first, right? And of course, we'll credit purchases. Why? Because we debited it when we weren't supposed to. To remove a debit, you have to go on the opposite side, which is the credit side, and put the amount you want to remove, which in this case is 450. So the credit entries are entered second, and they are indented relative to the debit entries. Right now, this is an error of principle. Now, they said not to put narratives, but I'm putting it for practice. An error of principle is where the wrong class of account is used, right? So it was supposed to go in the assets account. So we put it in the expense account. So that's an error of principle. Okay, the next error was that the owner took stock of 1,009 for her own use. 
She debited drawings and credited sales. Okay, she shouldn't have credited sales. Anytime the owner takes anything for his or her personal use, that's drawings, that'll be debited. So that half of the transaction was entered correctly. The credit should have gone to purchases. Why? Because when you take out stock, it's no longer available for sale. So to do that, you have to reduce the stock level. But we're not going to go to the stock account because we're taking it from the purchases, right? So we should have credited purchases, but we didn't. So we should credit purchases to fix that. And we have a credit to sales that shouldn't be there. To remove that or to undo that or to counterbalance it, you have to debit the sales account. So you have a debit where it shouldn't be. To fix that, you credit the sales account and put the credit where it should have been put, which is purchases. But this is also to correct an error of principle because we entered the item in the revenue account, sales, when it should have been entered in the expense account, purchases. Okay, item two. It says a return of goods by Small Contractors Inc. with 230 was recorded in the returns outward journal. Yeah, so if, if they send back goods, so we are gift back, right? Small Contractors is returning to us. That's a returns in. If we put it in the returns outward journal, it means we put it in the returns upwards account when the total from the journal was posted to the T account in the general ledger, which means returns upwards is too high. And it also means returns in was, <clears throat> was too low. It's missing that figure of 230. So this one is a little messy. <clears throat> Let me explain why. We have a debit that's missing. The debit to returns inwards is missing. Right, so we should put in a debit to returns inwards. Now, returns outwards, the transaction was put there, which would have been credited to returns outwards, but should not have been. So to undo that, to undo a credit, you have to debit the account. So you might be saying, but Chris, we have two debits. I thought you were supposed to have a debit and a credit. Right. We have two debits because the debit to returns in was missing. So we have to put it in. We have a debit to returns out, to cancel off a credit that which that should not have been made. So now the credit here will go to the suspense account. And this will be to correct an error of principle, right? So that, this is also an error of principle, right? Okay, so next item, item three, a voucher of $30 for taxi fare was never given to the petty cashier for recording. Okay, this is an error of omission. If you don't give the voucher, the transaction can't be recorded, but it should have been, so it was omitted. So how do we fix this? Right. So we suppose the, deb the debit and credit are both missing. So we put it in. We will debit taxi fare or traveling expenses, whatever you want to call it, because it's an expense. It was incurred and paid. So you should have debited it. And we'll credit petty cash or cash because we're paying money out of that. There are assets. And when they decrease, you have to credit the asset account. So, <clears throat> sorry, taxi fare expense, cash, error of omission. And the last item says a check for 360 paid to Paper Products Incorporated was credited in the creditor's account and debited in the cash book. If you pay somebody money, a check, your bank account is decreasing, which means you're going to have to credit bank. Whoever you're paying, a creditor, you're paying off a liability, which means the liability is going down. To record a decrease in a liability, you have to debit the liability account. So we were supposed to debit paper products, the creditor, and credit cash book. But we credited the creditor and debited cash book. This is a complete reversal of entries. Whatever, right? So we have, well, different ways to do it. One, you can make two sets of entries. One to cancel off the incorrect entries, and then one to put in the correct entries. The thing is, those will both be for the same dollar amount. So instead of making two separate entries, you could just make one set of entries for double the amount, right? Which in this case would be 720, 360 by two. So you're supposed to debit the creditor. So let's put that in and credit bank, right? This is complete reversal. Um, again, we use double the amount because one, we have to cancel the incorrect debit and credit that we made and then enter the correct debit and credit that should have been made, right? And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question five from the Jan 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm gonna put some cards up here. 
Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PBA outputs. Anyway, guys, once again, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye.